Konnichiwa, hajime maste. I'm Wen Jin. Uh, very nice to meet you. And I'm I'm dialing in from London, uh, where I am working from home. And I'm a research associate at the Center for Fine Print Research, University of the West of England, Bristol, in the United Kingdom. I wish I could be there today, but thank you for having me. I am looking at different ways of examining the printing process in Japanese woodblock printmaking, or mokuhanga. So um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about my research into gomazuri, which is also called sesame seed effect. Traditionally, ukiyo is produced in teams. So you would have an artist who is commissioned by a publisher and the designs would be translated into print form by a group of carvers and printers. And after the rise of photomechanical processes in the late 1800s, ukiyo-e became very labour-intensive and old-fashioned technique. Luckily, at the beginning of the 20th century, two movements of artists revived the technique, the shinhanga or new print movement that made classical traditional art um, images using the same publishing technique, and the sosakuhanga or creative printmakers who used the technique in a more individual way, um, carving and printing their blocks by hand. Now, the effect of gomazuri or sesame seed effect comes out when printers use relatively little glue and a relatively too much water and it makes a very mottled or speckled effect on the paper. And this technique of gomazuri seems to be predominant in a lot of the creative printers, the sosakuhanga printers work. So for example, if we look at Yamaguchi Gen, who made these beautiful abstract open images of layered fields of colour, he uses the sesame seed effect to uh, create vibrating colour fields. But we can also see sesame seed effect gomazuri in Kiyoshi Saito's prints of old Japan, where the speckled effect beautifully conveys the texture of stone and moss and wood, and um, a kind of nostalgic rustic beauty. Gomazuri for me signifies the beginning of the 20th century in the rise of creative printmaking and also in the rise of the artist artisan printmaker. Hori Junin Suri Nananin. So this phrase refers to how carvers would spend traditionally 10 years mastering their craft and printers would take seven years to master their craft and I am very sorry to um, approach this subject having only spent about seven days instead of seven years on the technique, but um, I hope that this is um, at least a little insight into gomazuri. So what exactly is gomazuri? Gomazuri is considered a technical flaw, but I will go to Kurosaki's guidebook on printing to explain in more full detail exactly why the colour splits. He explains, The pigment particles float independently in the water, so when you apply pressure in this state, the ink forms dots on its own when printed. If the paper is dry, the dots will look hard or solid, if wet, they will appear soft. If you apply strong pressure with a baren, the dots will be finer. With light pressure, they will be less distinct. April Volmer continues, This effect is commonly considered an error, but it can be used intentionally to create textured areas of colour in a print. It does take practice to control the effect. Rebecca Salter writes, Gomazuri was called Kozo Zuri because it was inadvertently made by failed attempts to print flat colour by novices. In the art and craft of woodblock printmaking, which um, goes through Western and Japanese um, woodcut, Kari Leitinen, Tula Moilinen, and Anti Tantu talk about Gomazuri um, in passing. The paper's too dry, the block is too dry, you haven't used enough pressure while rubbing. So they have um, talked about it as a problem. Finally, Laura Boswell writes, 
Printing with too little noddy results in a speckled or blotchy print. You will need to experiment to arrive at the results you want for a particular print. So why am I interested in gomazuri? My PhD is focusing on ways of capturing tacit knowledge in relief printmaking processes. Tacit knowledge is the information that uh, people who are skilled at a task have. Uh, it's usually unconscious. Uh, it's sometimes embodied. It's embedded in your gestures or in your performance. It's not necessarily verbalized or in intellectualized. And um, it's quite hard to define in words and therefore is not really often written or spoken of, but is essential to completing a task successfully. So gomazuri falls into the realm of tacit knowledge by virtue of the fact that it has no recipe or instruction for its creation and there are no clear explanations and students are tasked with learning by doing or learning through their mistakes and accumulating a body of tacit knowledge of their own. So I thought I would attempt to quantify um, tacit understanding of gomazuri by using some measuring tools and to make experiments to find out where it lies. So I decided to follow the simple question, how much glue, how much humidity and how much pressure will reliably create gomazuri effect? And can I link these to how spaced out and how large the spots are? So, you know, will altering one uh, factor change the end result? That's my question. So, of course, if I have this question, I need some measurement devices. So I decided to measure with the following items. I measured dampness with a handheld moisture meter made by Proster. It has two probes which you stick on the wood and it measures the conductance between the two and gives you an estimate of the humidity of the wood. I used this device to measure the wood after I had layered water, glue and ink on it, so just before I printed, and also to measure the humidity of the surface of the paper to see what the humidity was of the receiving object. I used a thermometer and a humidity meter to measure the uh, humidity of the air. Press the green button and you wait for the reading. 58 degrees, 58% uh, humidity, 16.5 degrees. You can, um, it does change quite quickly because if I'm talking at it, as I talk at it, it will probably increase. So I think it's quite sensitive. I measured the quantity of water and glue with syringes. At first, I just added quantities which felt intuitively correct, but actually after a while, I realized that using a syringe would allow me to create very fine differences in percentage concentration of glue. And I thought that was very important. Fourthly, I measured the pressure of printing with weighing scales. Um, at first I had a very bad contraption, which was my fruit bowl scales. Um, this was a little bit wobbly and it didn't register high enough pressure. The maximum weight was 5 kilograms, so I had to change to some human weighing scales, which was a little bit better. Things which stayed the same. So the paper is Echizen Kozo paper, which I purchased about 20 years ago. And um, actually I have the supplier here. If they're here, please get in touch because I really love this paper. It's from Echizen Imadate Kami Kojo. And I think it was the uh, Yamaguchi family that uh, I bought the paper from. The wood is Shina Benia, which is from an art supply shop in London called Intaglio Printmaker, but it has been imported from Japan. The glue is Hydropropyl Cellulose. It is a conservator archival glue, which was mixed with water, 2.5 grams with 75 mils of water to create a, a very lovely solution that would easily go through the syringe 
and had a similar viscosity to the glue that I would have used in Japan. The water was water that has been boiled and cooled down, thus some of the solids have been removed. It's not as clear as distilled water, but it was available. The brushes were Japanese bamboo stencil brushes for printing, or surikomi bake. The baren, I used two baren. I used Kurosaki's uh, plastic baren, which is a um, moderately new face. And I used Rosalind Keane's ball bearing baren, which um, I used once or twice. The sumi is from Seisendo in Nara. I really love this sumi, it was a liquid sumi. And the paint was Holbein Artist's watercolour. So I told you my, my measuring tools. I've told you the things which I've kept constant. Now I'm going to tell you about my experiments. So my printing process was such. I would preload the block with water and blot it dry with a cloth in order to um, achieve a kind of uniform humidity of around 14%. Then I applied my test amount of water, my test amount of glue and brushed them in, my test amount of ink. I tested the humidity of the surface prior to printing. I tested the humidity of the paper from the damp paper pack. I applied a moderate even amount of pressure until paint was slightly visible on the back of the paper and then I evaluated the results. Okay, the results. I did five different printing sessions which was only a start into this investigation um, but I would just run through the different experiments that I did. So the first one was with uh, Sumi using Seisen Do Sumi from Nara and uh, I wish I was there so love to visit the factory and find out more. The second was with colour. Uh, I wanted to see whether the pigment body of the colour made a difference into the appearance of Gomazuri. The third was force. I wanted to see if I used a certain amount of pressure or using a ball bearing baren whether I could make betazuri or flat colour instead of gomazuri or sesame seed effect. The fourth was um, a triangle um, sequence because I was running low on paper. So I decided to do sequential printing. So at least I knew the substrate humidity of the paper would be the same, the wood would be the same. So it would eliminate some of my factors. And the fifth experiment was a squares of grey, where I really, um, what do you call it? I really standardised the quantity of ink on each block to see what would happen. So, what did I learn? That paint has a glue-like effect, and that if you use a thick or sticky layer of paint, you might be able to substitute the glue out. And I have a suspicion that it might be one of the binders in the paint. It could also be related to the size of the colloids in the paint itself. So how finely the pigments have been ground. Don't know yet uh, exactly how fine these are. I learnt that um, if you use a huge amount of pressure, you can eliminate the need for nori. You can push the paint into the fibres of the paper and squash the gomazuri away. Um, but if you overdo it, you will almost result in an intaglio printmaking effect. So very high pressure will, over 10 kilograms, 9 or 10 kilograms of hand pressure will destroy the gomazuri. Conversely, light pressure around 2 to 5 kilograms will retain the gomazuri. Okay, pressure and weight are not the same and I think this is a massive flaw in my experiment. Um, the baren makes a really big difference as to um, whether the um, pressure is hard or soft. 
So I have actually made another side experiment to find out what the pressure of the baren is. Um, here I'm demonstrating the pressure of the baren using uh, red carbon paper on the surface of the block facing upwards and using paper on the top of that. So when you use the baren and make uh, marks over the block um, you can see with the ball bearing baren it provides a very very strong pressure and you have very uh, dark red lines coming out and if you use the Kurosaki Baren, it's very soft and you can see the overall impression is much lighter, even though the average weight applied to the back of both Barens was the same, which was between 5 and 10 kilograms. So you can see that I need to do more research here. I need to figure out what the pressure at the back of the paper is rather than the weight at the back of the paper. It seems to be a more dynamic force. Analyzing numbers. The average humidity of the block after water, glue and ink had been loaded on was taken just before printing. And I've taken all these measurements and calculated them and taken an average. It was surprisingly consistent around 19.5%. The dry blocks were given double the amount of water and glue in order to load them to bring them up to the 19-20% mark and this was actually a very good way of initially warming the block up. The wood seemed to regulate the humidity very well. Using the damp paper pack is great. On 20 separate readings, the average paper humidity was 16.48% and the highest was 17% and the lowest was 16.1%. So there's a very good, narrow, consistent range of humidity when you dampen the paper this way. And the newspaper pack itself reads around 45 to 50% humidity. So if you dampen a pack with newspaper and layer your paper in and let it sit for a few hours, it will make this amazingly consistent, humid um, paper for printing on. I also learned, most surprisingly, that very small changes in glue will result in quite substantial changes in gomazuri. And you can see the difference in the speckled effect is quite marked, uh, even with a concentration change of 2%. So I looked at the samples under the microscope with a magnification of 40 times. And you can see that the spots are of varying sizes and it would be difficult to count the number of spots seeing as they are all different. Um, so perhaps I should have a cutoff point. Maybe they should be all bigger than 0.1 of a millimeter in diameter. Um, and then how would I number them, how many would I, what kind of area would I choose to count them in is another consideration. So this has not been resolved yet. I mean you could actually measure the complete coverage so you could see how much white was left, how much was covered. So you could look at the total colour, reflectance and absorbance um, on the surface of the paper or you could use another measuring device. I mean, subjectively, to our eye, or to the trained eye, you can see that the print which has been printed with 2.5% glue has subjectively larger spots and more space between them than the one which is printed with 5% glue. But actually quantifying the difference is difficult, and I need to develop a way of measuring that. I mean, this experiment, this short research project was a start into investigating Japanese woodblock printmaking, in particular gomazuri, and um, subsequent experiments I will address 1% concentration changes and see if I can replicate these results. And I look forward to questions and feedback and comments. Thank you very much.